And I, but well, my grandfather, he was very Catholic, my mother's father, but he also, like, he was always reading his Bible, right? Like, every time I see him, he's reading the Bible. Yeah. And so it kind of cut against the the trope that you hear, you know, especially if you read, I would read Jack Kick Tracks because they were like a comic book, right. you know? <laughs> right. And you hear the Catholics don't read, the Catholics aren't allowed to read the Bible, was one that you heard all the time. I'm like, wow, he's a rule breaker. You know, he's, <laughs> he's reading the Bible, but he's Catholic. Uh, then I heard that, oh, they are allowed, but they just don't. And I knew that wasn't true because I see it happen all the time. Yeah. So uh, from generic Christianity, I tried to get more. Like I was, you know, you hear all the time, like this is a thing that people say in, you know, in the non-denominational church that nobody's 100% right. You know, none of, the, none of the denominations have it 100% right. So you just go to one that like feels good to you and you go to one where you like the music or you like the preaching or whatever. And then everybody sat right with me because there is absolute truth out there. You know, and to say like, well, this place is ninety percent right, and this place is eighty five percent right, but I like it better than the ninety percent. It just didn't really, it didn't make sense. So I started reading more into it, and working more into it, and that led me to my first kind of first kind of obstacle I came across yeah. was I looked at my grandfather the one day and I said, "How is it that you read the Bible all the time, and you're Catholic?" You know, like, how, yeah. you think that reading the Bible would lead you away from Catholicism because, you know, obviously it's not the right church. And he said, yeah, is that right? I said, yeah, you believe all these things, you read the Bible, and you believe all these things Catholics teach. And he said, well, let me ask you one question. I said, okay. He said, what, what's your opinion on John chapter 6? And, you know, now I know what John chapter 6 is, but yeah. at the time I was like, I don't even know what that is. He said, go home, read John chapter 6 and then come back and tell me what you think it means. Okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> you know, yeah. teenager, like, I'm, I'm gonna show this guy. And I go home and I read it, and first glance, you know, first time through it, pretty obvious that Jesus is saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, right? So then I said, well, I must be missing something. So I start reading all these different commentaries and reading different people's opinions, and you know, well, what's the Protestant take on it? What's the, it couldn't be, couldn't be what this says like it has there has to be another explanation but as much as i searched i couldn't really find it there you know different denominations have their opinions on what it means right. you know they have but none of it ever sat right with me almost the lack of curiosity about it sometimes is, is it yeah it's like they get to it and they're like oh well this it doesn't mean what catholics think it means right but sometimes they don't even offer their own opinion it's just like it's not the real presence next you know, on to John chapter 7. So, I just never did come back with an answer. I mean, you know, me and my grandfather were really close, and I see him almost every day, and I, yeah. just, I just dropped it. What, what was his story? You know, so he, he would have a, he was devout and read his, yeah. his Bible. Had, had your family, that side of the family, been Catholic for a long time? Oh, yeah, my mother's side of the family is, you know, yeah. Irish Catholic, so they're so just been all the way far back to, I guess, St. Patrick. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people have Catholic relatives, but they don't always have Catholic relatives who can share the faith with them who are reading their Bible and so Oh, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they were uh, like mass, they, you know, weekly mass goers and uh, very devout. Beautiful. But I don't know how far back. Like I said, sure. St. Patrick probably. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. But you guys were close, though. Yeah, we were close, but I just, I never brought it up again. Sure. Because I knew, deep down, I knew I had the losing side of the argument. And as a young teenage man, I wasn't going to lose an argument. So I was just like, better to drop it, you know? Yeah. And so that, it always, it, it was like, uh, Trent Horn always says, like a pebble in their shoe. Mm. You know, and that was that pebble in my shoe. I could feel it. Yeah. And anytime I thought about, you know, religion or thought about denominations or whatever, the real presence of the Eucharist was always kind of like, you know, kind of nod at me. Mm. But I said, it couldn't be right because the Catholic Church, they're the only ones that really, I mean, I didn't even know about Eastern Orthodox at the time, but the Catholic Church is the only ones that really preach this, this doctrine. But they're wrong on everything else. Yeah. So this is what I was thinking <laughs> is, so if they're wrong on everything else, how can they be right here? They can't be. It's like you know, an impossibility. So I would ignore it, but I kind of, it was always, like I said, it was always that thing that just you know, kept coming back to me and coming back to me and coming back to me. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was my early years sure. of faith, you know. Yeah, the pebble in the shoe analogy is, is a good one. And it's, I mean, again, it's significant to me that you you were close with your grandfather. And even though that you didn't bring it up again with him then, or at least for a long time, or we'll hear the rest of it, but when we could drop those pebbles in, right, in the midst of a, a relationship where there's obviously love, you right. know, like that's, 
sometimes those come out in the midst of conflict, you know. Right, yeah. And then, <laughs> then there's, a, there's an easy excuse to ignore the pebble, yeah. you know, or dismiss it. But when it's in the context of, I know this person loves the Lord, I know they love me, so I got this pebble in my shoe now. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you had to come at me with that, like, hey, you don't even believe in the Eucharist, then yeah. I would have just deflected it, never even thought of it again. But it was because the way he just kind of planted that seed of, what do you think of John? Just ask me what I thought of it. Right. And then what I thought of it, I couldn't, I couldn't really come back with an answer, you know. And like I said, there is, there's John Calvin's take on it, and there's all these different, you know, none of it really, it never, it never sat right with me, like I said. Sure. So, okay. So that was my teenage years. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward a couple of years, I, I kind of toyed around with a few different, you know, always within Christianity, but I, was, I felt like I was constantly wandering. You know, trying to find my find my place. You know, I would read about different different denominations, and I would kind of visit. I'd go to different church services of different denominations and stuff. And I thought that I was being drawn back to the liturgical, to the Presbyterian service. At that point, I hadn't been to one in years. You know, uh, it's like very ordered. You know, you, there's a, an order to it. It isn't like a mega church where it's just you know singing, 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 preaching, leave. It, there was like a there was more of an order to it. And so I thought that's what I was craving, was just kind of the order of, you know, a service like that. But, you know, now, looking back, like you said, you look back on things years later, it was the Eucharist that I was really craving. It wasn't just a liturgy, or the liturgy centered around the sacrifice of the Mass. Because I went to a couple of different liturgical Protestant churches, and they just felt that as, you know, not satisfying as anything else. Right. We're talking tonight with uh, Charles Johnston, 